everybody. Welcome to Depot TV. I am your host, Sherry Jackson, Executive Director of the Depot. And we're glad you decided to spend a little time with us tonight. We've got a great show. Caleb McGee and his big heart and big voice. We have Wes Sharon talking about recording and engineering right here in Norman, Oklahoma. Another poem by poet laureate Benjamin Myers and an up and coming artist with an original song she wrote that we're going to share with you. Um, before we get started, I've been trying to think of topics, things that we might talk about. And today I found myself at a, at a loss for words. Um, it's been a roller coaster of a week. We've seen a lot happen on the national, state, and local level. There are conversations to be had, fights to be fought, um, and everything feels urgent and important. So I just think I wanted to talk maybe about why, uh, why art and music? Um, because in those times when everything is urgent and important, when, um, when we're in that defensive, uh, must act now place, uh, two things. We need to take time to feel because that will help inform choices and art and music are nothing if not a language by which we get to express an emotion. Um, and because it is in those moments where you can put your shoulders down, where you can relax a few minutes, when you can experience a different perspective, when you can experience an emotion, when someone can bring you a story, when someone can sing you a song and just make you kind of vibrate with the universe for a minute. Um, I hope that's what we get to do for you sometimes. I'm hoping that's what we get to do for you a lot more in the coming months. Oh boy, are we working on some fun stuff. And I hope you stay tuned for that. Um, but for tonight, relax your shoulders, feel, take a minute to think, drop your shoulders, relax your jaw, and enjoy some Depot TV. Thanks for stopping by.
Sherry. And guess what this is? It's a commercial. Actually, it's a commercial for commercials. We have time on Depot TV and space, and we need some partners to help support Depot TV and keep it going. But you know what we got? We got this platform and audiences every week. And if you sell a thing or provide a service or just want to support us and say thanks, or if you have a shout out or something you want people to know about, you could become a partner in the Depot and have some commercial time of your very own. So give us a call at 405-307-9320 or email us at office at normandepot.org and find out how this commercial space could be your commercial space. Thanks. Everybody, we are here on Depot TV with the big voice and big heart of Caleb McGee. Welcome, Caleb. How are you doing? Hello, y'all. I'm great. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you very much. I love that you were sitting in your car, and I've just heard you were on your way for your second shot today. Yeah, um, I took my I took uh, the night off at UPS so I could lay in a puddle and sweat if I have to. Very nice. Very nice. Yep. Just a little bit after my second shot. And I will say that that's not a bad call. You might have a day or so of feeling not exactly like yourself, but worth it. Worth it. Right. Worth it. 
Absolutely. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your music with us on Depot TV. We appreciate you so much for that. Uh, and thank I wanted to, you. yeah, I wanted to let people know also we've got exciting stuff going on at the Depot. We're working on putting together some teams of people that will help us uh, innovate the programs that we do, bring new music and new uh, energy to the stuff we do. And Caleb, you have graciously agreed to be a part of that. Yeah, uh, I'm very excited to be part of that. Um, there's there's a lot of real neat people on this board, and I think I think we'll be able to bring some some really interesting and really good music and programming to to the people over this season. It. I love it. We love nothing more. We can't wait. We got our shots. We're gonna get back to doing some things. Oh, I can't wait to hug everybody. Music. Yeah, same, same. Uh, you, uh, over the course of all of this, before we get too excited about getting back to it, we've had a heck of a year or so and a bit, and your life has changed a lot. <laughs> it has. Year. Talk to me about that. You have new, new gig, new jobs, new stuff. So I started at Habitat for Humanity in November of 2019. Yes. And, um, you know, I, I love that job. I, I just left there, uh, like for the day, I'll mm -hmm. be back in the morning. Um, and then I decided that I wanted something that would be a little more permanent and with some benefits so I got on at UPS. Uh, they have me in what's called the irregular sort. So I throw all the stuff that's too big or too heavy or awkwardly shaped to go through the regular sort. Got you. Got you. When do you work? Th How often do you work there? What's that like? I'm both jobs Monday through Friday. So I leave my house at either eight. I, I get to work at either eight or nine in the morning at Habitat. Yeah. And then I get off at Habitat at three and I go to, I take an hour and then I drive up to UPS and I'm there till about nine 30 or 10. Ooh, so I get home at 11. It's a long day, but that's a long day. I'm getting used to it. Right on. Uh, and there's union membership at UPS. Is it, did I hear that yes, right? There is. Uh, yes, there is. That's, that. that's been, um, that's been an ambition of mine and something that I've been a big believer in, um, mm -hmm. you know, because of all the, because of a lot of reading I've done over the course of my life. And it's, it's great. Like there's, uh, there's a certain level of, uh, of guff that you don't have to take from management or supervisors as of like starting this June, I'll have health insurance for the first time as an adult. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to get a lot of stuff fixed. <laughs> you know, that's one of the things I don't think we've talked about a lot when we talk to artists, gigging artists and people that are working on their own and they're self-employed. There's so many resources they do not have access to. Don't yeah, have access I mean, to good health care and benefits packages and those kind of things. And so hooray that you have access to that now. I'm very excited. And um, I don't know, I, I hope that that's something that we can that we can work on as a society because mm -hmm. there's, there's no reason that, you know, these people in this job can, can get treatment for cancer or even day-to-day -day ailments. And then if you're on this side of that, you, you can't see a dentist for two decades. Yes. <laughs> it says it feels really ridiculous to have your health insurance tied to your job so that you can't take a choice or make a leap or kind of determine your course or your pathway because you're if you're especially if you're a person with health issues, you're too afraid of of leaving and moving. Um, uh, and that Absolutely. seems that seems I, I'm with you. That feels like a, that feels like some low hanging fruit on the we have some things to fix in our society. Let's like grab a hold of that one and take care of it. Seriously. Well, and the funny thing is, like, you know, everybody, all of the other industrialized nations have it. And it's it's, it's fine. It's it's a whole lot better than people just, you know, just not being able to take care of things when they come up. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And the numbers of people that go bankrupt every year because of bills that pile up, that just feels like a seriously easy, we don't have to have that be that way. Um, Absolutely. Yes. Uh, well, good for you. I'm glad. Hooray for you and UPS and the gig and the union and still finding time to make music. Um, yeah, on a on a much more limited basis than I used yeah. to. Um, I've played like this week that the this week and last week are the uh, three year anniversary of those teacher walkouts. Yeah. And I was telling someone that like over those two weeks, uh, I played more shows than I've played this entire year. Wow. Wow. Like, it's it's and that's including the live streams, you know, like it's it's been wild to try to just completely overhaul my lifestyle and get used to mm. get used to a completely different way, you know. Absolutely. Uh, it's a lot. Um but I'm I'm glad you're still trying. You have such a beautiful, big, powerful voice. I love to hear you sing. And so I'm glad you're still doing it. Uh, and I'm glad you're sharing some of it with us this week. I mean, I'm very excited about it. Um, I led in with, uh, w with a couple or with a song that I've been playing for a while. Um, and then uh, the second one on there is a new one that I've written over the course of this last year. Oh, I've got great. a couple more that I'm working on that I'd like to get finished before I before I get playing them. Okay. But uh, well, you let yeah, us know they're, when they're finished, and we'll have you back. You got it. I'd love to. All right, all right, everybody. I think that's it. Caleb, go get that second shot. Uh, so glad to talk to you. So glad to have you on board, helping with things at the depot. Thanks for being here. Glad to talk to you. Thanks, Sherry. Have a great day. All right, you too. Bye. Bye. Hi, everybody. Today, I am so excited to get to talk to, for the first time, we get to meet today, Wes Sharon, uh, who is the owner, operator, creative engineer, guru, janitor, as he mentioned, and all things at 115 Recording Studios here in Norman, Oklahoma. Welcome, Wes. Hey. Nice hey. Yeah. Hey, it's nice to meet you, too. Um, at, at, you know, as I mentioned earlier to you, I think I'm really glad that at the depot, we love good music and we love good music of all varieties. And um, I'm so happy to get a chance to meet and get to know some of the music producers in our community. And you are definitely one. Um, I, you started off playing as a band member before you were an engineer. Do I have that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I played bass in like high school bands. Yeah. Got it. Garage band type stuff, punk rock stuff. Nice. Uh, and I got started, you know, 14, about there. And That's perfect. I have a 14-year-old at home, and this morning the the playing rep ranged from the Ramones to Joan Jett. There was Metallica. There was some modern stuff I didn't know, but I, I 14, that's a good age. That's all fun. Start. By me. That's pretty good. Yeah. My, my son's 15, and he listens to mostly hip-hop. Mostly yeah. like SoundCloud rappers, and then occasionally I'll hear Motorhead coming from. Nice, me. nice, but yeah. That's when I know I've won as a parent. <laughs> one in. Yes, <laughs> when I heard War Pigs coming out of the bedroom this morning, I was like, "I'm doing something okay." That's a win, man. <laughs> I'm all. That's a win. Yeah. Uh, and so you played. You played in bands. You toured in bands. When did you first get behind the board as the engineer? Was that something that you always did, being a band member? When I was like 15, I was in a band and we had an opportunity to record. And when we went, it, it wasn't much of a recording studio. It was just somebody's home. Right. But, um, it was so appealing. I just thought, you know, this is where I want to be. And then probably by the time I was 17 or 18, I was in kind of a regionally successful band, you know. Okay. Um, and uh, we went, we went to record a record and I really enjoyed the process. And then. Uh, a few other, well, I'd done other recordings with other bands I was in and I was about 19 and I, this friend of mine 
uh, had a band and he goes, we want you to produce our record. Mm. I, I didn't actually know what that was. I, I, had, right. I, really, I really didn't. I knew that there was a producer on the back of records, you know, I'd say produced by whoever. And uh, I took a cooler full of beer and sat there and listened to him play. Like, I, I really didn't know what to do. But I, yeah. the engineer at that studio was really kind to me and liked what I, I had recorded me as well, which is why we went there. And he just started kind of telling me, like, how to, how to get started. You know, he's like, well, as a producer, you're going to do this or, you know, this is what you're going to do. And I'm the engineer. And, and it became really clear I needed to learn how to engineer if I wanted to communicate better. Mm -hmm. And so uh, after a period of time, uh, uh, I ended up I ended up working at a studio in California. And that's really where I learned everything. Um, and I was there for about three years, I think. OK. Like that. Um, and then what brought you back to Oklahoma? Uh, that, that's a, well, a girl, a girl, <laughs> yeah, probably, uh, there, there were some other circumstances I would assume, but, um, it became, it also became cheaper for me to live in Oklahoma and work in California. Absolutely. Uh, I could, I get that. Uh, at that point I was being asked to make records with people and the budgets weren't big, but it allowed me to you know, you could say, like, just fly me out there. We'll stay at the studio. Yeah. Um, the place where I worked is a place called Prairie Sun Recording. Shout out to Mooker Rennick. And um, they have they have housing on site. Um, oh, and nice. I've got other stuff. Camille Harp went out there w with me and Ryan Engelman. Um, mm -hmm. The Turnpike Troubadours and I took a record out there. Um, wow. And, you know, and they, I, still, I still deal with those guys quite a bit. Um, it's great. kind of like. It, you know, most people have an alma mater. I, that's mine. You know, I, I didn't I didn't go to college. So that, that's where I kind of learned everything. Nice. I, I think it's lovely to have um, mentors. Uh, definitely somebody to learn from uh, as you're trying to figure things out. But and kudos to you for being a bit self-made, though, finding the mentors, working with the people, just kind of grinding it out and figuring it out. I think that's spectacular. And you have been able to work with a lot of different kind of artists, um, a lot of genres of music. Uh, I, I would start listing them, but I'm really, we have about 10 minutes, so I'm going to encourage people to go Google uh, that list. It's pretty impressive. Like you said, the Turnpike Trumadors and Camille Harper, those that we know, John Fulbright, we know. Uh, and then there are several other bands that you've worked with that uh, I think are terrific. And I wanted to give you a few minutes to talk about what you're doing now. Um, you have a, an impressive list of things going on now. Um, tell us all about them. Well, uh, lately, I, I just I just finished up a couple of records. Um, I worked with a band from Germany called Villa Noise. I, I think they're incredible. Uh, they're really, really good. Um, and it's very different than what I usually do. It's it's mostly for anybody that's familiar. It, it's more like a Muse record than it would be like a John Fulbright record. Um, right. But uh, it's really it's fun to do. I I grew up with punk rock and rock, and it's fun to kind of get back to like really loud stuff. And, um, do you think punk? Do you, do you see punk coming? back at some point i mean do you see i mean i see i hear it everywhere you don't you don't think yeah, so yeah i don't i don't consider what's going on now punk i think you'd have to yeah. I think probably if you wanted to uh use the term as it was intended yeah um it would probably be more like a hip hop thing going okay. on um and i promise you neither one of us would have ever heard of it Fair it's, nice. it's like right. it'll come up from the underground somewhere and uh um punk rock as i knew it I was dead by 1980. Yeah, I agree. You know, and then hardcore and stuff like that that came after that. Um, it wasn't really what I was into. I liked Black Flag and Bad Brains and stuff, but I wasn't yes. really, I wasn't, I, I didn't really care about, I don't know, other stuff. You know, I don't want to throw any band under the bus, but. Understood. Uh, there was Understood. a lot. Of, and also like, you know, for me, I liked Black Sabbath and I liked Van Halen and I liked guitar music, you know, it, sure. didn't, it didn't really matter. I, I, I loved the police and, you know, but, but I, I liked stuff that I, I'm old enough to remember the sex pistols coming to Tulsa. 
you know, oh. I, I saw that on the news and it was like this weird thing. That yeah. A couple of things happened in a 12 month period, if I remember correctly. And like they came to Tulsa and Elvis died. And those yeah, really close together. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I immediately became an Elvis fan. And then I immediately became interested in what the Sex Pistols were doing. So I was I was pretty young, and it was it isn't like you're old enough to appreciate the aesthetic value. You know, there was something going on that seemed to be familiar and appropriate to me. But by the time I was eleven, I was pretty in. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and then by the time I was thirteen and fourteen, all hope was lost. <laughs> I, would, I would never be the same, and I was never coming home. Yeah, there's something about that discovery. Uh, does that, so what I like is that you do work with all of these different genres of music, but you have this, a bit of a heavy background from in music, the music that you played. Do you find that you bring that to your engineering, even when you're working with somebody like a John Fulbright or a, you know, Turnbike Troubadours or something doing, somebody doing something more folky? Do you bring that aesthetic into the room somehow? I think I do. Okay. I, I can't imagine that I wouldn't. Um, yeah. And I think that, like, you know, I remember, like, when we were making uh, John's record from the ground up, he was, like, you know, staying at my house. And mm -hmm. I was watching some video or something. It was actually a Bad Brains video, like a live deal. And uh, he just walked through the room and he was like, no thanks. Age <laughs> <laughs> diving and stuff. And I was like, man, you've missed out on all the fun. You're getting stupid. <laughs> old man music or whatever but uh but like john's music i always thought of punk rock as a folk art so i don't yeah. it communicated immediately with the crowd as it was in, intended you know it, it it was confrontational and yes. i don't think and i, I don't want to make this into something that's not but i don't think that's any different than woody guthrie i don't think what he said is more important than what the clash said um i i don't think that uh what either of them said is more important than what Mozart intended people to feel, you know, like it's all the same thing. Mm, uh, I agree. There are outliers out there that make it look incredibly good and easy mm -hmm. for them. Like uh, people like Prince, you know, huh. um, they're, and those are just the freaks of the, the nature of the beast. You know, they yeah. somehow some, you know, the, the super musical people, they appear to you as if they were just born that way. And some of them might've been, but like, I would say some, I've been really lucky and I've worked with some really great songwriters, like, mm -hmm. like Fulbright or like Evan Felker. Um, uh, and what they're doing isn't, I don't think it's different than like punk rock or funk or whatever. It, it's all kind of trying to get to one of five of the, uh, there's like five destinations for music, you know, um, you know, there's like religion, women mm. or men, you know, like the opposite sex, you know, there's confrontation, you know, trying to write a wrong, you know, there's only so many stories that you can write. You know? Yeah. And, and all of them kind of pursue those things, you know, all forms of music pursue those things. And it's hopefully they do. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, I, I, mean I, 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 felt, yeah, I fell down a rabbit hole of learning about the origins of music and engineered music for mood control and how some of the people that created music worked their way into the industry and helped, you know, produce some pop music that was definitely going to, you know, do the thing. And I, I think those are trying to get listeners, but I think good music and there might be a distinction there somewhere is trying to do those things you said. I agree. 100%. Like good music. People are trying to make music. Yeah. Uh, and are are really, on a, a few story arcs. Yeah. And I, I, and I, the delivery method, you know, can change, you know, yeah. and, and there are areas where I'll just check out. Like I don't like things that are overly cool. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's been said before, you know, be, you know, coolness kind of denotes this level of detachment, like where you, you act like you're above it and I'm, I'm too old to be cool. I don't want to be cool. I'm going to get excited about stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm, I'm drawn to people that are like as authentic as possible. Yeah. You know? And when I start seeing people, that was the one thing I kind of missed out on. I grew up in Owasso, Oklahoma, 
So like if, if you were into like, I don't know, let's say the clash, you know, you really, you didn't have access to those clothes. You know, you didn't, that part of it, what, and you didn't see them. MTV didn't exist. So like yeah. you were kind of living through the album covers and a lot of times they didn't tell you much about the people involved at all. Um, as far as an image, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm just, I authenticity and honesty is always a good thing. You know, I, th- I think that's the one thing I'm looking for in any kind of music. And when, and when I'm working with people that are really talented, my job is really easy. You yeah. Know? And I think what they're looking for is a sounding board and really probably not much more. You know, if, if you're coming to me and you want me to rewrite your song, I'm probably the wrong guy for the job. You know, if, if you need a guitar part and I'm the one that has to play it, we're all in trouble. You know, mm-hmm. like, I, I, I was really lucky that when I was record, being recorded as an artist that those guys, especially this one person uh, in particular, he was really hands off. And then when I went to work at Prairie Sun, I saw how like the real guys did it and they could dig into the minutia and they could write charts and do all that stuff. But for the most part, they were. They I, they were dealing with artists that already had an act, they mm-hmm. already had material, and they were chosen. That was a big studio, and they they had already been chosen by a record label to be there. And so you yeah. just want to make sure you let them do their thing, you know. Um, you know, I I think listening to you talk about how you produce music, this is the fascinating part for me because the way that we think about music, that's what you bring to the table. Because all of those, the ways that you are a sounding board are you steeped in your experiences, the way that you approach music, the way that you can listen to what somebody's bringing into your studio. It makes me fascinated and want to go listen to your entire catalog. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. Um, I thank you very much for being here. We, I intended for us to do a deep dive into some of the acts you were working on and do a shout out to your projects, but I'm going to just encourage our audience to go check out 115 recording studios. Uh, take a look at what's come out of that studio. Look at the artists that were working that, um, Wes has worked with because I have a feeling from this short conversation that there's probably some pretty spectacular stuff there that I need to go listen to. Um, Thanks very much for being here, Wes. Oh, uh, thanks for having me. I, I really appreciate it. That's Absolutely. Fun. Absolutely. Well, let's do it again. And I mean it. Now I definitely want to go have a cup of coffee and talk about all things music sometime when we can. All right. Thanks very much, everybody. Wes Sharon. Night hoops. With tar still sludging our fingers from roofing jobs work through the heat of day, with scratches down our forearms from cutting brush, with sunburned back, poison ivy riding our sore calves behind the old legion hut, around a pole over a patch of cracked concrete illuminated by one leaning lamppost and an August moon twenty years ago, hoops. Far from city ball, if we dribbled too far, the bounce smothered in gravel and dirt. But we kept close to the pole and counted anything off the concrete as three. Tonight, I'm watching basketball on TV with the sound turned down and hear instead the rubber pounding into baked concrete beneath the broken windows of the abandoned hut. June bugs bouncing off the yellow light. I let my eyes fall shut and see us jostling, bumping, reaching across to steal the ball, breaking for the basket, battling over limited territory. We played because we had nowhere else to be, or because work had worn us to bear sleeplessness. Or we played to stay gone until an empty bottle dropped from someone's half-dead hand. And from this distance I know what is going to happen. One of us will go to war and return with an empty sleeve. Another will lose a child and grieve tearlessly. His whole life an eroding city under a coarse cloud of dust. The rest of us will drift off to jobs or jail, off to divorces and the rusty nail of small humiliations, 
moving apart as silently and subtly as sluggish continents. Looking back now, I see us there pushing, posting up, tugging on sweaty t-shirts, and I don't know if we are attempting to keep each other away from the basket or desperately trying to hold one another inside that thin circle of light. guys it's me sherry and guess what this is it's a commercial actually it's a commercial for commercials we have time on depot tv and space and we need some partners to help support depot tv and keep it going but you know what we got we got this platform and audiences every week and if you sell a thing or provide a service or just want to support us and say thanks or if you have a shout out or something you want people to know about you could become a partner in the depot and have some commercial time of your very own. So give us a call at 405-307-9320 or email us at office at normandepot.org and find out how this commercial space could be your commercial space. Thanks.
production Then the factory said they didn't need it shift anymore Yes, he was two years out from his pension Then the factory said they didn't need it shift anymore was a cost-saving measure put in place by men who'd never been hungry before Oh, that CEO made himself a fortune Went out and bought himself a brand new yacht that they earned in that gold watch
Thanks, everybody, for joining us for Depot TV. Make sure to tune in next week. We have more art, more music, more interviews. Uh, if there's anything you would like to see on Depot TV, send us an email at office at normandepot.org. We would love to hear from you about content you'd like to see on Depot TV. Thanks to all of our sponsors, all the people that support us, people like you who could become a member of the Depot for as little as $5 a month. We'll see you next week. Thanks. I have been